Let me mess with my channel's algorithm so you don't have to do it with yours. <laughs> That's it. That's my intro. Hey, Mandy, you're watching Swell Entertainment. And today we are talking about a little experiment I did on my YouTube channel for the month of May. The reason I wanted to do an experiment is that my channel is doing very good. We're doing very good. Not only am I doing infinitely better views wise, watch time rise, and I've basically tripled what I made in the same amount of time last year from AdSense alone. Like, we're doing very good for this channel, but one thing that is not translating well is the subscriber count. Subscribers are still ticking up. I'm definitely not losing subscribers. The amount of subscribers I should be gaining with the amount of views I was, I'm was i getting comparatively to last year, it just doesn't make sense. So I'm doing really well with you guys. You guys like me. You guys like the random insane content that I do all the time. It's great. I love it. Thank you. But we're trying to indoctrinate more people into our cult. It's not even what's in my cult, but it feels like a cult. I am calling this a cult. <laughs> I'm the eccentric leader, even though I do think I would do much better in a number two position. You know, I have a little more power, but I'm less likely to get poisoned. Halt, your data is at risk. And today's sponsor, Aura, can help with that. Whether you're a content creator or not these days, it feels like every part of our lives and all of our data is online. But what you might not know is that there are data brokers making fortunes, selling data to robocallers, spammers, and just anyone who might want your information. But our sponsor Aura can help by identifying these data brokers and submitting automatic opt-out requests on your behalf. You see, these brokers are legally required to remove your information if you ask them to, but they make it super difficult to figure out how to do this, which is what Aura can help with. And the Aura app does so much more to protect you and your family from online threats that you can't see. It's super easy to set up and you only need one app for parental controls, a VPN, password management, identity theft insurance, and so much more. You can get it all at one affordable price. Start today to make sure that no one is exploiting your data and profiting off of it. Go to aura.com slash swell to get a two week free trial. It'll also be linked down below or you can scan the QR code. Again, that's aura.com slash swell. And thank you again to Aura for sponsoring this video. So for the month of May, I decided that I was going to post something to my YouTube channel every single day, at least one thing. So in that posting every day includes the weekly videos every Tuesday. Lately, I try to post Fridays as well because I do batch content because there's a lot I wanna talk about because I'm also crazy. And so like today, once I finish filming this video, I will go and film a different video review for you guys to see eventually. And then every other day of the week either had a short or a community post posted. Now, why community post? Because I wanted to kind of see if that actually did anything. I remember a few years back, there was this whole exposing thing about maybe this may have been a shenanigan about how to kind of cheat the YouTube algorithm by posting polls because polls were being promoted more outside of just your community tab. It was being promoted on other things as well. It was a good way to kind of farm engagement and it could potentially lead to new subscribers. There was a creator who was like, how to cheat the YouTube algorithm? And everyone was like, you mean engagement? <laughs> I wanted to see what it would do now because I know the algorithm is constantly changing. I have other future experiments planned. This is just one at a time that I'm doing right now. And obviously I'm not gonna tell you what those experiments are because that defeats the purpose of said experiments. The reason I wanted to do this was to see if we could up my overall engagement of the channel and how that would affect subscribers, views, things like that outside of the main channel videos. If we kind of keep the views up when there's not a main channel video, because obviously with main channel videos, there's a spike in engagement. So that leads to those videos getting more views, obviously, than when I occasionally post shorts like I have in previous months and seeing if I could just kind of keep that average 24 hour, 48 hour view count a little more consistent to see what that would do. Now I know what you might be thinking, what is that graphed behind her? This means nothing. I don't even know what this is referring to. I literally searched data chart into Google images. This is what came up. So because I have an English degree, you know, science is, you know, a passion, but not my strong suit. There were, I believe exactly two days that I missed. I will check that in the data, but I believe there was two days specifically. And I think honestly, it was because the two main channel videos that were posted the day before that time did really well, or the short was doing really well. And so I didn't post or I forgot to post because I was like, oh, I'll do it later because I don't wanna ruin the momentum of this post. Cause sometimes you just gotta do that. You gotta kind of time things right. You don't wanna mess up the algorithm by throwing in something new when one thing is performing super well. And then I would just forget and, and then it's too late. So across May, I posted eight videos. May was a very packed month for me, regardless for events and traveling and all of that. So the fact that I was able to get in as much as I did, I'm very impressed with myself, frankly. So I'm patting I worked hard last month, <laughs> despite how crazy it was. 
So there was five Tuesdays in May. So that really helped things because I know there was at least one or two Fridays where I did not post a video. So when there's five Tuesdays already, I'm having more long form videos than the average. And then, so I did eight videos. So one, two, yeah. So I missed one Friday video basically. Let's count the shorts. Oh yeah. And I think I started this on May 2nd. So it may have been three days that I missed for shorts. For the month of May, I did 16 shorts, eight long form videos and five community posts, totaling 29, which which means that I did in fact miss the three days that I thought I missed. So that's good. At least I know the exact number. So I was like, that seems like not enough shorts. So community posts, I don't use super frequently, mainly because sometimes the comments can be hostile. And I don't know why that is. I've talked to some other creators and some international creators as well. And apparently this is like specifically a US thing. I don't know if you're just emboldened because you know there's a higher likelihood I'm gonna see it because there's less comments. So like you're just more of an asshole. But like sometimes they're super nice. Sometimes they're they're not very nice. Um, the the comments on my post for uh, when Lisa passed away, obviously, were very kind and supportive, and I, I appreciated that. Normally, that's how I use it is for things like that where there's just like it's an easier way to get a con in announcement out without posting a video to the channel, because obviously the most followers I have across any of my platforms is on YouTube. So the community post is like if I need you guys to see it in in like without making a full video, community tab is probably what I will use because it'll show up in your subscription feed if you're just kind of scrolling videos. Prior to this thumbnail editor I was looking for, didn't work out. My Twitter account being hacked, I posted about that. And then when this started, I shared an article that I was mentioned in uh, talking about Twitter being hacked. And then I started doing polls. I like doing polls because here they don't disappear after 24 hours. You can find them on Instagram and such, but like normally I typically do them on Instagram and I just don't like Twitter polls because it's just a lot of randos that comment on those. But like more likely here, I get more comments from you guys. Uh, so for example, I made just a fun little influencer boxing questions. We just had greater clash. So I was like, like, hey, we know that creator boxing is going on. Like, what's another competition style sport you want to see? So I did lacrosse, wrestling, bodybuilding, hockey, and jousting. Obviously, jousting won because just random questions about like, what's a follow-up job for creators? A lot of people said editing. This question freaked out a lot of people. I got a lot of emails and DMs about, are you leaving content creation? I'm just nosy. I just like knowing things. And also I've made it, I, I've made it abundantly clear. I do not want to do this for the rest of my life. This is my job right now. This is not who I want to be for the rest of my life. You know what I'm saying? Eventually there will come a day where I no longer do this. So I just hope that one day you are all prepared for that. It's not going to be right now. It's probably not going to be this year, probably not next year, but eventually I will no longer be posting on YouTube. And I, I hope that one day you are okay with that. I'm sure you will be because the content cycle, will, someone will replace me. Someone's trying to replace me right now, I'm sure. I asked, how'd you find out about Neil Mohan becoming the CEO of YouTube? A lot of you said this poll, shared about a podcast I was on, but just little fun little updates like that. So for shorts, for the month of May, I got half a million views. I am not a shorts creator. It's not something that I particularly enjoy doing. It's more work at this point. However, for this experiment in particular, I didn't wanna do what a lot of my uh, mutuals do, which is repurpose long form content for shorts. That's probably gonna be the next test because this, <laughs> spoiler alert, not worth it. <laughs> I don't like repurposing content if I don't have to. I like making creative content, different content, fun little things, bonus footage, things like that. That's why Patreon is its own separate thing. You get bonus footage, B-roll, things like that. That's fun. I like doing that. TikTok, short, spicy takes. Sometimes I'm hot. I'm mainly on there for research. And then if I build a follower over count over there, great. So for YouTube though, with shorts content, that 60 second time limit is more constrictive than you would think. Even TikTok has realized that because now they have their new beta, you know, creator fund program, basically. You have a higher likelihood of making money from your content if it's over a minute long, basically. Um, I just started that. I will give you an update once I know more about that. As far as the shorts go, I just, I don't like it. It There's, there's something about the shorts algorithm that really prioritizes uh, the ideal candidate for shorts views right now is the ideal candidate that everyone thinks TikTok has. It's mostly children or young teenagers who are obsessed with content creators and want to also be a content creator, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. 
But then the algorithm then responds to that by prioritizing hustle, grind culture content, and also content about already popular TikTokers and YouTubers and the like. That's where you have all of these channels that are phrasing themselves as archival channels, which there are legitimate archival channels on YouTube. And I want to make that abundantly clear. But then there are accounts that just re-upload TikToks and clips from YouTube videos of actually popular creators. And then the creator who is actually featured in this content, who had made this content, does not see a dime of this. And I do think that that's an issue because considering how hostile the content ID system is and the copyright system is here on YouTube, the fact that that is an issue ongoing of people's content being stolen and then profited off of via a YouTube channel because they're either claiming to be the creator or not. Some people will say like YouTube's not monetizing these channels. They're monetizing something, otherwise they would not still be doing this. And whether they're just farming the ability to get monetized and then they change everything and sell the channel, whatever, what have you, I don't know. They're doing this for a reason and it's not for archival purposes, okay? Because these they got these videos somehow because for some of these people, that most of these people, the videos are still up on their channels. So what do you mean you're doing this for archival purposes? Go fuck yourself. So for example, some of my most popular shorts mention other creators. Most popular short uh, video for this month uh, was giving Dobrik's another shot uh, where I re-reviewed David Dobrik's pizza place. I want more flavor from this. Like I love spicy vodka sauce and it doesn't really have any flavor. Like a crispy croissant. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a better description. And I knew that video would probably do well on shorts because previously, uh, one of my most viewed shorts, I think it's still my most viewed short, is one where I bought and reviewed David Dobrik's gel blaster in my bathroom. A toy meant for children. See where I'm going with this? <laughs> That is what the algorithm for shorts really wants. And so that's where I think that me repurposing my old or even current long form content into shorts would perform better and probably lead to more because it's like, oh yeah, I can kind of feed into this versus here's an exclusive, like fun little video, what have you. And like on TikTok, people seem to like when I do little updates about events and things like that. So it's kind of understanding of like, really what do the shorts feed really wants for yourself and kind of figuring that out. I just personally have not figured that out in a way that still fits my content. And I think that's the main thing. My content, my long form content, there's quite a few creators who look at my content. And they're like, everything you do should not work. Everything that you do, I would look at that video and be like, I'm not gonna post that, it's gonna get terrible views. And then it's a one of 10 for you. Like that's that's what's been happening with me. And that tells me that it's probably me. You know, like it's you guys like me, which is great, but we need other people to like me as well. We don't need, it would be nice. I'm fine with the follower count I have now, but you know, at the end of the day, people want, you to have more subscribers. They kind of ignore view count more than anything, which is ridiculous because I think views are the important thing. But you know, subscriber count is what a lot of people look at as far as legitimacy goes. And in an effort for me to continue to, you know, review and share more exclusive events and things like that, having a higher sub count would be helpful for that. And a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, yeah, shorts, just pumping out shorts leads to an absolute metric fuckload of subscribers. Guess how many subscribers I gained from shorts in the month of May from posting 16 shorts? Half a million views. Take a guess right now. Leave it, drop it in chat. <laughs> I forgot what platform we're on. Drop it in the comment section how many subscribers you think I got. 166. Not thousand, 166. That's it. Which does not surprise me because like, think about it. I'm not hot enough to just get like a, I wanna see her again type of follow. I know that, don't be, you, relax, it's fine. I know what I look like, we're good. I am hot, but not in that way. You get what I'm saying? I'm funny, but I don't think I did any really funny videos. The other video that did really well in shorts was one that I thought was very funny before I went to New York. I was having really bad anxiety going on my trip and I realized what it was, was that I was really worried about not being harassed, not being like followed. I can deal with that, that's fine. I've, Let's go. I was worried about someone running up with an iPhone, shoving it in my face and asking me what I'm wearing. Name five US presidents. Well, how much money is in my bank account? Why am I worried about that? I live in LA. I'm literally a content creator that lives in LA. I don't have that fear here. What is TikTok done to my brain, my perception of New York City that that's what I'm worried about? That got, you know, 54K views, which for my channel is for a short is pretty good considering when you look at some of like my lower view videos and things like that. Other ones, I love theater, tagged it, 
up the butt with Broadway New York City Jessica Chastain. She spins around the stage for like 15 minutes before uh, a doll's house starts. And I'm a simp, so naturally I, I went. Robots made me a pepperoni pizza. You know, again, another kind of children s teenager thing. That sounds weird. I don't want to be a child content creator. Not really, you know, I, I've talked about this quite a bit. I have a lot of respect for children's content creators because I do think there is a skill to that, um, especially when you're dealing with the ever growing development of children and like your audience base is gonna keep outgrowing you. So how are you gonna deal with the next generation of children that's gonna start watching you and things like that? It's just not something I wanna do for myself. You know, I like that I make content for people my own age. I really like that. I love when I meet other creators and they're like, I feel like you're talking to me. That's nice. I like that. You know what I'm saying? I make content I wanna watch. As far as the discovering from the views, um, browse features and shorts feed are 40, 40 pretty much, 44% browse feature, shorts feed 40%, which isn't terrible, I don't think, but I don't know what like the norm is. For that, very few suggested videos. Channel pages, 4.5%, which is pretty low. YouTube search, 2%. Something I would definitely do differently if I were to do this experiment again is to better utilize hashtags in my shorts because quite a few people I've seen now have talked about how great the search feature can be if you make your videos more searchable. For example, that's what happened with the dollhouse video that I posted because I tagged it multiple times with different tags. And so it got a little bit more views when typically that video probably wouldn't have gotten any views. My target audience for my long form videos is not going to be on the shorts feed for the most part. And that's the thing about me as well for my content and why I think I, you know, have been able to maintain, you know, what I've been able to build content wise for long form is that I've always prioritized not just being a content creator, but also a viewer and a user of these platforms that I'm, you know, talking about, which is what has led me to, you know, be on top of everything. And I'm just not someone who enjoys the shorts feed content, you know, and there are quite a few creators that I've met who are like, oh no, I just stay on shorts feed now. Or I've met people who are just only on reels content, but like, that's not for me. TikTok is something I've gotten used to. It's an app that can pivot a lot more. YouTube, I just always consider it as a long form platform. So it doesn't surprise me that it's hard for me to adapt to shorts content when I just don't enjoy you know, consuming shorts, if that makes sense. For like how I operate as a content creator. A lot of other content creators can do that. That's just not how I operate. Here's some other search terms that popped up for the shorts. Small entertainment, 16%. Shocker. Love Again review. Um, I got invited to an early screening of Love Again from the Carpel group. So I went to that and that was fun. Um, I, I actually really liked Love Again. Love Again was a fun, silly, goofy rom-com. I really liked it. Um, and it has um, a man being pathetic, which I always, I, I love. I love when a man is just down bad for his crush the entire time. Dobrik's Pizza, 1.1%. Shrek Grave. So two search terms for Love Again. How many chose to view your videos? 69.1% viewed 30% swiped away. So for the Dobrik's pizza review, I had a big red text on the first thing to explain like what I'm doing. Cause I didn't say like, we're reviewing Dobrik's pizza. I didn't have enough time to say that. So I just did like a uh, held up the pizza and started eating. So I put Dobrik's pizza take two or Dobrik's take two in big red letters at the top, at the front. And I think that may have led to the 81% that stayed and watched the video. You know what I'm saying? Like less people swiped away because they knew immediately what they were getting versus this is a woman. <laughs> She's wearing glasses, pass. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, I'm not. The second highest one only had a 75% stick around rate, but still that's higher than the 69% average. I don't know, it's just interesting. Um, as far as likes go, 37K likes. It's pretty good. Again, half a million views is nothing bad. That definitely got my average up for the month, which is nice. So my posts across the board got 662,000 impressions. My community tab performed better than the shorts did, which is crazy. Like 7.6K likes, obviously lower, and 49 subscribers, which I didn't even think I got any subscribers from them at that time. And I do think this all is because of the polls. For example, the the poll that I asked about the new, where if you, how you found out about the new CEO, Neil, 45,000 votes on that one. That's crazy from my channel. When you think about it, that's a pretty good percentage of at least the established audience. I thought that was interesting. Obviously no revenue from this. We're four days into June now. So the month of May is officially technically finalized as far as the creator studio is concerned. As far as how much money I'll actually make from this month, I won't know for certain until the 15th of this month. And then I won't get paid until the 21st of this month. Okay. Okay. Across the board, I got 2.3 million views 
for the month of May. Watch time, 416,000 hours and only 5.7K subscribers. And as far as revenue goes, I made $15,025.16. The money's great. I'm not gonna say it's not. That's the most I've made this year so far. It's not drastically more than last month. In uh, the month of April, I made 14,000. Just barely topped it out, honestly, between $14,601 in April. So like just a few hundred dollars more. Oh yeah, from shorts as well. I made content, sorry, hold on. Shorts, I made $42.63 directly from shorts. Now that is better than what I could make from the creator fund on TikTok. Do I think this is necessarily worth it for what I consider the amount of work that I put into this? Not particularly, but it's not nothing. And that is with an RPM CPM rate of eight cents for every 1000 views uh, for shorts content. And my RPM for long form videos that month was uh, $8.34, which is pretty good. For my channel, I've heard back and forth because entertainment is kind of an up and down. Um, but my RPM has been pretty consistent this year, which is really great. Again, the channel is doing well. It's just not converting well bit by bit between this month and last month. Okay. So views wise, I got 2.3 million views. Great. Last month I got 1.9 million views. So giant jump in views. Watch time, 4.6 thousand hours of watch time last month. 390,000 hours of watch time, Few hundred bucks difference for ad revenue, which isn't nothing to scoff at, but you know, Okay, just like as far as the other ones, like way less impressive. And then for subscribers, this month, 5.7 thousand subscribers gained. Um, for April, 6,600 subscribers gained without all that extra work and less views. It's not worth it. For this particular experience, it was to see how the subscribers would play out and it just didn't work. This month, I don't know, we'll try doing, there's there's so many different programs. I'll, I'll start doing the shorts for the repurposed content. We'll see if that's what you want. Do you just wanna see more of me? To remind you that I have other videos, is that, we'll try that. I'm a little annoyed with myself more than anything, but I mean, at least I have an answer. Like trying to see if upping the engagement across the channel would do anything. And it did things, just not what I wanted it to do, which is fine. <laughs> I'm not gonna pretend I'm not annoyed because I am. This is not worth it for me, the, the being the crazy shorts creator that I don't really wanna be. Because everyone talks about how much of a, you know, injection it is to your subscriber count to start doing shorts content. However, those shorts followers, subscribers don't go and watch long form content. So I'd rather be someone with 368,000 subscribers getting uh, 150, 200 K views a video than someone with a million getting that same amount of views per video. My point is, is that currently with the audience that I have and the views that I'm getting, the subscriber to view count makes sense. Would it be nice if it was higher? Absolutely. Because then, you know, more subscribers could translate to more viewers, but those subscribers have to come from long form videos. So overall, upping the interaction engagement on my channel did not benefit me all that much. Uh, the views, it was nice, you know, made up for when, when certain long form videos did, you know, not as good, that was great. So for long form videos, I got 1.8 million views for the month, which is a little bit more on par with what I got for April. So that makes sense. I appreciate it. Your hard work paid off. Publishing more videos contributed to your channel getting more views than usual. Meanwhile, your channel subscriber count grew as fast as usual and revenue was around the typical amount. Even the creator studio said, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> and again, overall, comparatively to 2022, for the start of the year, I'm doing so much better. If you can't remember, my channel did not perform well until July of last year. We're already performing well. So that means that potentially the plateau could be coming from my channel, but I'm not too worried about it. Also, I plan accordingly. I always plan that you guys will eventually hate me. So all in all, do I think this is worth it? No, <laughs> not for me. Uh, maybe a different type of creator would uh, get out of this. I do like doing the community posts. I don't like reading those comments. I also don't like reading shorts comments. I don't know what it is about short form videos. Maybe it's because it's just a wider range of people. I don't know who my videos are being showed to, but the level of just like mean obtuseness that comes from shorts comments can often be ridiculous. Like on TikTok, um, there's a lot of comments where people are just um, like actively helpless. Like, have you ever, I'm sure you've seen like a food video and it's like, could you do the same thing with grapes instead of raisins? Probably. Have you tried? Do you have grapes? Try that. Surely you can substitute one ingredient for this salad. There's a level of critical thinking that sometimes is missing from, from TikTok comments. For shorts, it was like people just get mad 
over the dumbest shit. To compare it to Twitter is a disservice to Twitter, which is saying something. That's gonna be it. Am I gonna become a shorts creator now? If you wanna go watch my short spicy takes where I'm sometimes chaotic and doing filters and trends and things like that, go follow me on on TikTok at Swall Entertainment. That's where you can find me over there. I don't promote it all that much because I really like popping up in comment sections and across for you pages like a cryptid. Mothman just strikes again. I'm also trying to post more on Snapchat if you wanna go follow me over there. We're working on figuring out what the deal is because apparently there's money on Snapchat. I am currently not making money on Snapchat, but it's a fun little like update post thing for the day. So that's nice. But if you are another content creator and you decide to do this test, let me know what what results you get, because I'd be super curious, and especially whether or not you are a long form creator or a shorts creator. Are you a long form creator? Have you tried doing a ton of shorts? Are you a shorts creator? Do you think that I did something wrong? What shorts do you think perform super well on the shorts feed as compared to my long form content and why you don't think that my long form slash short form or what have you is uh, you know contributing well? Why do you think I'm not getting new subscribers? Mainly I'm looking at it and my average for the subscriber count for non-subscribed viewers is much lower than it has been previously. So I think I just need to work on my bait drawing you in. Come join the cult. Let me know down below what you think. Reminder, I have a podcast, this Walsh and Anne's podcast. Reminder, I have merch. There's not going to be one for this video. Shout out to my patrons. Thank you so much for supporting me on Patreon. If you also look more on my Patreon, that will be listed down below. I just want to know what social media. It'll be up here. And that's going to be have all the day. Goodbye. I mean, at the end of the day, YouTube is still winning because shorts are still paying better than the creator fund on TikTok, so. Thank you, Andrew, Allen, Awful, BJ, Cameron, Christopher, Chris, Crispy, Crispy, Crash, PC, China, Dirty One, Don, Elliot, Donnie, Evan, Eric, Eyal, Hopeless, Homer, Incognito, Isaiah, Joe, John, M, Jordan, Joseph, Kenny, Kim, Kristen, Justin, Lamb, Lexus, Louise, Mae West, Madeline, Matt, Matthew S, Meme Lord, Michael, Michael J, Michael T, Micah, Nathaniel, Pat, Penn, Richard, Philip, Rob, Rosie, Red, Robert, Ross, Ryan, Sam, Serena, Skylar, Simon, Tasha, Timothy, Heavenly Plastic, Tyler, Tenzin, Tom, Thomas, Querty, Victor, Randy, Winter, Wendy, Will, Williams, Zendry's Wink.